It looks like our guests have been uh, allowed in from the, the waiting room. Welcome uh, to the first session of the Poway Unified uh, College and Career Showcase 2021. Uh, we were forced to, to take this event online last year and actually realize that there's some real benefits to doing it this way. So we're happy to welcome you back to a second year of this online forum. I am really excited um, to host it. My name is Joe Austin. I work for Poway Unified in their career and technical education department. And I'll be moderating this discussion. Uh, I am fortunate to know uh, one of our participants, Deshaun Walker, was actually our, our careers overlapped a little bit in the tail end of his senior year at Hoover High School. Uh, so I'm going to start with the introductions and let Deshaun tell you a little bit about who he is, uh, which historically black college or university he represents, and, uh, and then we'll move on to our other participants. Thank you. Uh, so good evening, everyone. I'm Deshaun Walker. I graduated Hoover High School in 2014, and then I attended Howard University uh, for my undergraduate degree in human development 2014 to 2018. Um, while at Hoover, I received an Army ROTC scholarship. So they paid, uh, that was a full ride. So uh, room and board, uh, tuition, a book stipend, a monthly stipend, and then uh, essentially graduated debt-free and uh, received a commission into the United States Army. I'm currently first lieutenant promotable, waiting on that captain's list uh, in a couple days, actually. And then I'll take command afterwards. I, and I said it to Deshaun before everybody else joined the Zoom, but I, I just can't tell him how, how proud I am to know him and to have overlapped a little bit uh, with with the, the, the beginning of this what I'm sure is going to be an amazing career. Our second guest is James Willis. James Willis is an alumnus of Morehouse College. James, will you take a minute to give a, us a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. How's everyone doing? Uh, hopefully doing well and staying safe in this crazy time. Um, like you said, my name is James Willis. I am a 2008 graduate of Westview High School uh, in Powell Unified School District. And then I went on to Morehouse College I'm a 2012 graduate of Morehouse where I majored in Spanish and psychology. Um, just really briefly about my Morehouse experience. My first interaction with Morehouse was when I was uh, the summer after my junior year of high school at Westview. I did a program called the pre-summer, pre-summer, uh, or pre-freshman summer program, excuse me. And basically it's an opportunity where you go spend six weeks on campus, um, I used it as like a test run to see like, is this really somewhere that I want to apply? And it was, I fell in love with the campus and I took, uh, I think two or three courses during that program. So I, when I applied to Morehouse and actually started that following or not the following, but the second following fall in 2008, I actually started with a few credits, uh, under my belt already, which was, you know, extremely helpful. I then went ahead, decided I went to major in psychology originally. And that was great, loved the process. And then junior year, I decided to study abroad in Barcelona, Spain. And at that point I was like, I fell in love with the language, fell in love with the culture and decided, I think I have enough credits to swing double majoring in Spanish and psychology. So that's what I ended up doing. And then uh, after graduation in 2012, I came back to Poway um, well, Carmel Mountain area, and began working in uh, educational consulting, originally with Poway Unified School District, uh, where we have college-bound programs, and we work with school districts throughout the state. So that's what I presently do. James, nice job. And you've already kind of segued into the follow-up question. The title of this presentation is Exploration of Historically Black Colleges and Universities. So thanks for kind of getting the ball rolling on uh, how that became kind of got on your radar and how you uh, how you chose Morehouse. Uh, our third presenter tonight, and, and maybe third of four, we're still waiting for one to join us, is uh, Brandon Williams. Brandon is uh, an alumnus of Tuskegee University. Brandon, why don't you do an introduction here? Uh, good evening, everyone. How y'all doing? Uh, my name is Brandon Williams. I am the uh, I'm an alumnus of the Tuskegee University, class of 2010. Um, my major uh, was in biology uh, with a business minor. I'm from the Los Angeles area uh, where I left to attend Tuskegee. Uh, my career uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in higher education. I'm cur currently in uh, medical education. I work at USC, fight on. 
um, as well as I recruit students. I'm actually an official recruiter for Tuskegee University as well. So I was glad to be aboard. So in no particular order, guys, I want to ask the question, uh, how, how and when did uh, historically black colleges and universities get on your radar? Um, who do you have to kind of reach back and thank uh, for making that connection? And then what was the, uh, your experience of kind of making a selection of school? Um, and just because James is on the top of my three presenters, I'm going to ask James to kick this one off. Sure, sounds good. Um, actually, I have a, a very trickled past, I guess, with historically black colleges. My dad is originally from Jackson, Mississippi, and he went to a historically black college, uh, Jackson State University. And my mom is originally from uh, Oakland, California. She went to UC Irvine, so she didn't really have much exposure to historically black colleges. I do have a lot of family in the South, so growing up, we would always take trips in the summertime. So we'd go by Jackson State, or when I'd go to Atlanta to visit uh, cousins and uncles there, we'd go by Morehouse and Spelman. But I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go to school. And then growing up here, like in the uh, Poway area, we didn't have a lot of exposure to like historically black colleges. So it was really just kind of like personal. And then by the time it was around like sophomore, maybe my freshman year, towards the end of my freshman year when my brother was a senior, um, he went to an HBCU as well. He went to North Carolina a and And I got to thinking like, where do I want to go to school? Um, and that's when I started looking into summer programs. And I found that summer program between my junior and senior year, the PSP program. And it was great. It was just the test run that I needed um, because I knew it was going to be a completely different academic environment that I was used to. So I wanted to like dip it in, did it, get a little test run first and then see how it worked. And it was, it was amazing. I knew probably from like the second week that like I definitely want to apply to Morehouse. And then when it came down to application time, I applied to Morehouse, NYU, UCLA, and San Francisco State. Um, but I did Morehouse early decision. So I, I found out before Christmas that I got in and I knew um, I, was, I went, didn't even open my other um, application or my other acceptance letters. I got into all the other schools. And I was like, okay, cool, like, it's fine. I, I'm not interested in going. And then I found out I got a scholarship, which was like the cherry on top. Um, and actually, I guess there'll probably be a time later on where we could talk about it, but some of these pictures that I selected for the background kind of lend itself to the service and like my Morehouse experience a little bit. So we can get into that later. Thank you for that. We will, I promise you. Um, Deshaun, talk a little bit about how uh, Howard got to be your school of choice. Uh, so my English teacher senior year uh, had us do a project where we research what our top 10 schools were and uh, going to school in San Diego, just California in general, um, the four or the eight schools that they wanted us to apply to, four UCs, four CSUs. I had no knowledge whatsoever of black colleges, HBCUs. The only uh, college I did know of that I really wanted to go to was West Point. Um, and so I had I gotten a, a general officer recommendation. We were working on getting a senator's recommendation. And when we did that project, she asked us to think about why do you wanna to go to the school? Does it have your major? Is it far away? Do you wanna be close to family? Does it have programs you want? Um, and like I said, going to school in San Diego, I knew nothing about black colleges. So uh, I was first generation college uh, graduate. So um, I, I, Howard had my major. It was 2,000 miles away from home, so my family had to put in some effort to come see me. Um, it had the programs I wanted. It had ROTC um, and just a lot of things that I was not privy to at Howard or at, um, at Hoover. And so um, I, I applied. I got in. I called every day to the ROTC program or to the uh, admissions admissions program because I got into the ROTC program and got an ROTC scholarship before I got my acceptance to Howard. So I called Howard admissions every day like, hey, I got it. I got my scholarship. I got $200,000 to go to school there. Uh, can you let me go? And I finally ended up getting the acceptance. Uh, I think it was three or four days before the deadline for you to choose what school you wanted to go to. Um, and so it was, it was smooth sailing from there. 
and I have an identical twin brother, so we kind of go back and forth. He went to uh, historical black university as well, so um, that that's my story there. And it brings back such great memories. I got to ask who your senior English teacher was. Was it Yolanda Noyes or Ted uh, Ted uh, or, or or Robert Robinson? It was Miss G. I can't Miss Gastelum. Oh, Lorena Gastelum. Yeah. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. That was a that was an amazing year, and and I'll never forget your senior awards night. I just felt like uh, your legs must have been tired from walking up and down on that stage. <laughs> Brandon, uh, why don't you take a, a minute to kind of again kind of set the stage for how an HCBU came onto your, or HBCU came onto your radar, and, and maybe who uh, was responsible for helping put it there? Yes, um, actually, my my story is a little bit different. Um, I actually attended the uh, Black College Expo in Los Angeles. So I attended the Black College Expo all four years uh, in high school from 2001 until my senior year, literally. I went all four years. So I was getting exposed to different colleges, different Black colleges at the time. And my mentor, uh, who's now uh, actually my family member, uh, Ms. Finney, uh, she actually, she's a Southern grad. She's actually an engineer, works for NASA. And she actually exposed myself and many other students. And I was, in a, I was part of the Black Student Union um, at my high school to the Black College Expo. So that's how I got to learn the history about our Black colleges within the country, as more as Tuskegee University as well. Sorry to say, but Tuskegee was not my first choice. Howard University was. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it came down to it came down to money. It came down to talking to family members. It came down to my major. And I felt as though Tuskegee was, was a place for me to go to. Um, and I've, I love it ever since. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, that is a very rare sighting we just saw for an HBCU alum to admit that their first choice was another school. I, I've never seen it before in public. If Deshaun had been wearing a collar, he probably would have popped it right then. <laughs> Uh, let me ask uh, the question, James, you sort of tipped your hand on this earlier about um, the, the, the kind of the culture, the connection you have with your school at Morehouse. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that and how significantly different that feels when you compare it to, to friends or colleagues who did not go to HCB, HBCUs? Absolutely. I mean, I just think, I think now is the perfect time to even bring that topic up just because it's homecoming season. So for HBCU alums, this is a time where we look forward to more than any um, other time in the year of like getting together. It's almost like the excitement of a family reunion that you want to go to. Um, whereas my colleague, my friends and counterparts that I work with now or that I'm friends with now um, that did not go to HBCUs, when I mentioned homecoming to them, they're like, you know, it's, you know, it's going on, but they don't have the same excitement, the same like zeal. Um, I just, I, I love to describe it to my, my younger cousins as four years of just an experience that is unmatched and you form bonds there that are just so much stronger, um, partially because you live amongst the people that you go to school with. So, and I think the experience for a lot of people, especially when you grow up in Southern California, for a lot of Black students is very rarely getting the chance to academically succeed with the same people that you're socialized with. Um, at least that was my experience growing up at Westview. It was I was oftentimes the only Black kid in my class or like, I think I may have had two or three um, Black uh, instructors the entire time that I was in school. Um, but it was just a completely different environment. It was more of a nurturing environment, I, I'd say, that, that nurtured more to like the holistic experience. I, I'd say that I learned just as much outside the classroom as I did inside. Um, and like I said, I just think the bonds are just so tight. I, there's There are friends that I have in almost every major city that I can think of, and I can stop over for a layover and say, hey, my flight was delayed. Can I come to your house? My friends will be at the airport in 20 minutes um, to pick me up. Like, it's those type of bonds that I think are really formed um, in my experience at HBCUs. That's that is about as uh, perfectly as I've ever heard anyone sum that up. So thank you for that, uh, yeah. Brandon. Do you want to give your version of that? What can I say? He he put a cherry on top, summed it up with everything he said. I mean, homecoming is a family reunion that you want to look that you look forward to coming to. It's a it's a great experience. I mean, from the football games to the bands 
to the food, to the vendors, to the alumni who are in their 80s, 90s, 100 years old, still come down to homecoming in their walkers, suited and booted, dressed up to come down and have a good time. I mean, I can't, I can't say that more. <laughs> Uh, Deshaun, when you were at Hoover, Hoover is the second oldest uh, high school in the city and, and, and the closest probably I ever came to what you guys are describing in a sense of homecoming was at Hoover because you know, with 80 years of experience, we had some folks suited and booted on walkers yeah. too. So um, the homecoming was a real special experience. Um, Deshaun, talk about Talk about your frame on this on this question about the, the, the strength of culture and bond um, at a historically black college or university. Uh, so, so growing up uh, mid-city, uh, and, and I actually came to the Hoover mid-city area um, for, for 10th grade. So I went to Hoover 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, it's a big diverse group. We've got a naturalization center just a few blocks away from Hoover. Uh, and so the, the rich culture around Hoover and then going all the way over to Howard University uh, on the East Coast where the way that people talk is different. I, I had many experiences where I would go to McDonald's and I would turn my head because I didn't know uh, what they were saying or how they were saying it or if it was rude or if it was polite, I just didn't know. Um, but the but the way that I felt as a student, I didn't feel like a student, I felt like a family member. And I, I felt the same at Howard because we, we, I mean, I had some issues while I was at Howard with family um, and Hoover became my family. The STEP team I created became my family. The ROTC program became my family. Cardinals Interact became my family. And I had the same sentiment when I got to Howard. Um, it just felt like I just moved to another family. Um, I said when I got there, I didn't have enough clothes to go to Howard. I was in the business school when I first got there and everybody was wearing three piece suits and lapel pins and Stacy, I mean, just decked out, like they said. Um, but the but the family aspect, I think, is what kept me the most and what drew me the most and is honestly why I tell people to go to HBCUs. Um, like they said, there's people who went to Howard University, you know, 80 years ago, and they come back and they give to the students, they talk to the students, uh, and it's just... The, the alumni is is very helpful um, and I, I loved every minute of it. And I think going after or after I graduated, I think I've, I've grown more with my ha Howard family after graduating than even while I was a student there, so. So let's talk about that, like your role in your respective schools um, as an alum, like what's, what, how is that? What, what is that like, James? I, I personally love it. I think one thing that he mentioned or it, it triggered in me when he was talking was the historic element of the schools and all, all of our, all HBCUs, but especially the three schools that are represented here um, really do have a very, very rich history. Um, several HBCUs um, have direct ties to like the, the slave times in, in America. So like Morehouse was founded in the basement of a church that was a stop on the Underground Railroad. Um, you learn elements of that culture when you're a student there. It's, it's, those are the types of things that are also taught and beyond just like the regular history that you learn or the regular math that you would learn. And I think it's also really like a humbling experience to think that you're sitting in the same halls that Martin Luther King went to school in, or that like, you know, you're sitting in buildings that were, you know, the backdrop to the civil rights movement. I think those are really just powerful emotions that you feel as a student. And then, like he said, you only kind of grow to appreciate them more with time. And then you really realize, at least from my, and from my experience, you learn you realize how sacred that space is once you graduate and come back. And you're like, wow, there really is no place like this. And that's what I really impress upon like younger scholars that 
while there are great schools, there are you know, over 5,000 university, colleges and universities in America, and you can get a great education all over. But there are four years that you can go to a place like Morehouse College. We don't offer you know, graduate degrees. It is an undergraduate experience only. And you know, the ideal, I always, always push for the four-year experience. Don't be one of the people who you know, stick around for seven, eight years. It's not that great of an experience, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for some, but it's all good. Um, but yeah, the the experience is just so worth it, and it's such a rare opportunity that that cannot be duplicated. I think I think that is what kind of makes it special as well. Brandon, I, I'm going to start with you next time because I feel like you're you're uh, you have had these two guys talk and, and touch all the high points. You have anything you want to add to that one? Uh, about kind of the alumni experience of the culture in general um, relative to uh, Tuskegee, Tuskegee? Yes, the alumni experience is, is awesome. Our Tuskegee Network is, yeah. is um, yeah. our, our Tuskegee Network, sorry, excuse me. Our Tuskegee Network is very strong. We have a very strong, dedicated alumni. Um, as, you can, you know, as you can see, our school was founded. Our school was actually built by our students. So Booker T. Washington help educate our students to come build our school. So while they're building our school, they receive their education that way. So this is little things here and there that, you know, we, we take a rich upon. Of course, the Tuskegee Airmen, I mean, they, they went into World War II as fighter pilots. They lost no missions. And, you know, they commemorative. And it's just walking up and down Tuskegee, the university, it's, it's history. It's rich. Even more. Even when I go to Morehouse, I'm like, yeah, this is more. This is the same grounds that Martin Luther King walked on. <laughs> Malcolm, you know, not Malcolm X. Um, you know, Spike Lee and Samuel Jackson. On top of many more alum, Howard, Felicia, 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 Felicia Rashad, Felicia Rashad, is the dean at Howard University. Now, so each. I mean, that's just, that's just one university. I mean. This, this, all of our universities got history, but excuse me, I have to actually get off the phone. But <laughs> I, I, uh, I love that your son's trying to get your attention. Like this is one of those Zoom things that you, I, I just, I don't know why I love it when it happens. My dogs are yapping in the background, so I apologize for that. But, uh, uh, but tell your son, thank you for loaning you to us uh, tonight, because I think this is really awesome information. And this thank is a cool segue. I'm gonna, I promise I was gonna stick with you, Brandon. I hope that's okay. When you think back to your pre-decision high school self, or maybe even middle school self, because I know you talked, Brandon, about having gone to a bunch of Black college expos and sort of getting some early exposure, knew it, it sounds like, before Deshaun and James had made a decision to attend an HBCU. Um, when you think back to that version of yourself to now, and, and, and it sounds like you all have an appreciation for the gravity of the situation that now you're a part of that history, right? As an alum, you are a part of, I get goosebumps thinking about that. I didn't feel that way at San Diego State University, by the way. I was, I had an amazing college experience. James, it did take longer than four years. Uh, I did return for a grad program though. Um, but talk about that, Brandon, like how, how does it feel and what will it mean to your kids, you know, when you talk about Tuskegee? Um, man, it, it is, it's such an amazing experience from high school. I was, I was involved with sports clubs, community, but in college it excelled, <laughs> it excelled, not just in the school, but it excelled outside the community and outside the school. Uh, these three gentlemen here, they're, we're HBCU family. We, we're going to look out for each other. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you all my numbers. You can give me a call later off just in case we're back, but we're, we're family. And so. My, for me, I preach going to a, a, a historic black college to my sons. Um, they go to Tuskegee events with me. They have not been to homecoming yet. They're not ready for that. But they, have, they, they go to events with me, go to my, you know, if we have a full, we watch football, our football games every Saturday, um, uh, you know, uh, club meetings. Uh, so I don't try to burn them out too much, but they know if not Tuskegee University, they, they will be going to a historic black college for college, for, at least for undergrad. Graduate school, they can do whatever they want to do. But for undergrad, they will be going to a historic black college. And just to get that rich experience and that, and that family tradition, hopefully the number one will be Tuskegee. But if not, that's okay. 
at some point in your last answer, you said even more house. And I thought James was going to come out of his Brady Bunch square and come after you. <laughs> James, talk about that same thing. Like put it in context, like your prior self to your current self. And like, what is it? Can you feel the weight of that gravity of like being a part of that, that school's history now? Absolutely. And I think to myself of how great of a decision it is that I went to Morehouse. It's definitely one of the greatest decisions I ever made. I tell, I get to work with scholars on a regular basis, um, typically ninth through 12th. So when I interact with them, I always tell them just how great of an experience it was and that I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. It literally, I mean, it's, it's hard to picture or hard to say what my life would be like had I not gone to Morehouse, had I gone to NYU or had I gone to UCLA. But I just, I, it was, to me, it was the best decision I could have made, for sure. I definitely push uh, HBCUs on all of my, like, younger siblings. So I've, I've had a younger cousin who's gone to Spelman. I've had several younger cousins go to Morehouse. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's just so special. It's, it's somewhere that I literally keep. It's a very sacred space for me. I hold it near and dear to my heart. Um, I donate on a regular basis. They they can get more money from me than almost anyone else. The, the little the, the current students will call and just a 20 minute phone call and I'll be like, you know what? Okay, I'll write the check. It's fine. I'll I'll put it in the mail tomorrow. Um, like you said, it is, it's like a family. And not only just with Morehouse, it is with other HBCUs. So when I come back for like homecoming at Westview Wall, I missed. I missed my 10 year reunion at Westview. Um, it was just bad timing. But this actually, this is a perfect analogy. It goes to show my 10 year reunion for Morehouse is coming up next October. And I will not miss that for anything in the world. But the Westview reunion, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll catch the 15 year, I'll catch the next one. But that, that um, it's such a perfect way to contextualize it. Like, yeah, it really is. And I, I got to tell you, one of my close friends and, and colleagues, and uh, he's in actually government relations related to uh, education as a Morehouse grad, and I've known him for probably 15 years, and I can't count on both hands the number of times he's interrupted a thought to remind people of the importance of the fact that he went to Morehouse or to, to, to take a moment to promote it to somebody who's mm -hmm. trying to make a, a college choice. And uh, I, I get that it's different. I get that it's different. Yeah. I'm, I'm it, and it's so, it's so hard to explain, but I think a lot of times, I think it's like I mentioned earlier, uh, most times, especially when you're on like the advanced academic route of taking the rigorous courses, the AP courses, you rarely get a chance to like have more than one, more than two, more than three black scholars in the same classroom. So to go from there to a black environment that that historically and presently is dedicated to the education of young black minds, it's it's powerful. Yeah, it's 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 just powerful. Deshaun, I, I remember, you know, you mentioned earlier that Hoover High School is probably one of the most diverse learning communities in our county. Um, but I want to hear your version of that, because uh, uh, you, there didn't seem to be anything you couldn't do in high school. You were Jero TC battalion lead. I think uh, you were part of the AVID program. You were part of Cardinals Interact. Like you did, a, you were the, the front of all of it. Um, how did that shift and what was the gravity of um, feeling instantly like part of a community at Howard? So, so with Hoover, like you said, ROTC, all kind of academic programs. I did track. I was the captain of the track team. And I felt like the token, like I said, the token black kid at Hoover. Um, but then when I got to Howard, I was one of 25,000 token black kids um, and, and like I said, when I got there, I didn't have enough clothes. So I felt like it was almost a competition. Like every day I'm waking up to compete against 25,000 other people. Um, but it wasn't necessarily a competition. It was, how can we make each other better? How can we improve ourselves as young black men and women in the United States? How can we leave Howard, pour back into the communities that we came from, bring students regardless of their race, nationality, background uh, to Howard and help them go back to their communities and do the same thing. And then how can we turn around and pour into Howard itself? Um, 
so yeah when i right when i left hoover it was like it was like oh my god there are twenty five thousand other me's here how can i separate myself it is so perfect i remember i remember you're kind of seeing you off and feeling like uh we, you know, we knew you were going to make waves wherever you went. So it's so great to see you again. Um, we have about three minutes left in this. So I just want to, I'll go, I'm going to start with Brandon again, just because I feel like he's brought up the rear a couple of times. Do you have any final thoughts, Brandon, that you want to share uh, with families who might view this session and, and be considering uh, a historically black college? Yes, I, I say to all my students, to anybody who I meet, don't be afraid to take chances. The world is so much larger than California. <laughs> Go to historical black college, learn about yourself, learn about your culture, learn about others from other from different people from different places, and enjoy yourself. Grow, network. Don't be so into your shell. Blossom, and do well. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you. sir. James, how about you? Uh, yeah, sure. I'd like to close uh, on on one thing that I think is overlooked oftentimes when it comes to HBCUs. Um, I went to Morehouse, which is an all male HBCU. So that in itself, itself is a very unique experience. Of course, right next door is Spelman College, which is all women. And then between us is Clark Atlanta University, which is co-ed. So we had that large university feel in what we call the AUC, the Atlanta University Center. But I want to speak just a little bit to the diversity at uh, HBCUs. Oftentimes it, people hear historically black colleges and just think like, oh, you know, it's all black people, it's all the same. But although there are all, it is a historically black college, um, it is still a very diverse environment. You have all regions of the country represented, all regions of the world. I remember um, a couple of years before I went to Morehouse, our valedictorian was white. Um, so we have, we have white students from America. I remember there being students from Asia, students from South America. So it really lets you look beyond just the simple lens of black, of the black American experience to really delve into like the, the diaspora of Africa and really where blackness has, has gone and spread worldwide. Uh, I think that's one element. And then, like you said, don't be afraid to try things. I think one of the greatest benefits I did was that summer program while I was still in high school. So I would push people to, if you're considering an HBCU or even possibly have a thought about it, is look into summer programs for your scholars to go for you know three weeks in the summer, six weeks in the summer. Some offer credits, others just offer an experience where you can go live on campus, get a feel for the campus, see like, is this something that I want to do? You can meet people. Um, he mentioned, uh, someone mentioned, I forgot who it was, but scholarships, when you go and establish connections early, they will put you on and let you know about scholarships that came through. My, my application fee was waived. I was on a full scholarship, all because of like relationships that I made. So I would push establishing relationships as early as possible. And then if at all curious, this goes for any institution, not just HBCUs. Um, I suggest that people just as a family, as an individual family, call up the school and say, hey, you know, I have a 10th grader, I have a ninth grader who's interested in going. Um, is there a way that we can come by for a little tour? Stopping by, just talking, maybe with a couple of students, maybe an admissions officer or just a college ambassador, getting a feel for the school, seeing if, you know, if that is a place you want to call home. Because to me, Morehouse was a home uh, physically for four years and then just, you know, spiritually for a lifetime. And I think that's one of the most important elements is finding that perfect home for you. I, I don't know if you guys are able to monitor the chat, but <clears throat> your reference to that summer program, I think, has probably had a big influence, James. And that, that one of the comments was that HC, HBCUs are definitely on our college visit list. So mm -hmm. it's, I, I think the, the advice has been heard and, and it's going to get acted on. So it's, that's fantastic. Deshaun, you get the last word. What do you got? Uh, I would just stress that um, HBCUs are now not just for African-Americans. Um, a lot of people, even today, uh, when I was telling my supply sergeant when I was leaving my office that I was going to speak on a virtual college fair about black colleges. And I told him to go to Howard. 
And he's like, well, I'm not black. And I'm like, well, you can still go to Howard. Uh, you can still go to any HBCU. And HBCUs were created to give African-Americans back then an opportunity to be educated. And so now I think we still, we still uh, appeal to the young uh, black African-American male and female, but we also appeal to anyone who wants um, a vast cultural experience who wants a total experience, who wants, uh, like, I, I, I didn't go to West Point because I wanted the band. I wanted the, you know, people coming from all over. I made friends the first day I got to Howard. Right when I threw my bags on the ground, it was people in my room like, hey, what's up, man? What are you doing? We're going to go to the cab. Come hang out with us. Um, but just, just for anybody who wants to go to a Black college, the experience is like no other. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't have gone anywhere else. And I'm so happy that I chose Howard, but I'm happy that I chose uh, an HBCU. And like I said, anybody who wants to go in a, to an HBCU, it is, a, it is a total experience. You get a great education. You, you get a, a awesome connections and networking. Um, and then you have experiences like no other. Homecoming, the football games, Howard loses a lot of football games, but I don't go because they don't make touchdowns. I go because of the experience and livelihood. I mean, we've had uh, uh, Jesse Jackson just randomly show up at our football games, um, Kurt Franklin, and just all kind of people who want to come and pour into this next generation. Michelle Obama a couple times. Uh, so go, go to an HBCU, no matter what you look like, uh, get poured into, and then turn around and go pour into somebody else. I, I can't thank the three of you enough. I think you uh, are all excellent ambassadors for your respective universities, um, and, and I can't thank you enough. Brandon, I want to also thank you for throwing your email into the chat. James, Deshaun, if you're willing to do the same, um, I will make sure that that gets uh, included in this recording. So parents or students that are watching now or watching the recorded version of this can reach out and, and ask you guys some follow-up questions. Thanks so much for taking the time, guys. The, the feedback has been effusive. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. You do the same. And Deshaun, I'm going to wait till your, your message comes up. Maybe I missed it. We'll throw yours in there too. All right, guys. Thanks so much.